Hello, Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Women's Cave. Wow, I'm kind of surprised. We actually mm -hmm. got that right. And did it together. Like, high five, Wilnona. Yes. So, we can welcome our wonderful guest. Would you please introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Joe. Yes, <laughs> thank you. I'm John Hope, a uh, writer of uh, children's and uh, middle grade fiction, as well as uh, a bunch of short stories. And I'm honored to uh, be on this video. <laughs> oh, he's so nice. That's Did nice. she not tell you we have our own Roku TV channel? So, you know, you're on digital TV too. Yes, wow. I am. Wow, big. it is big today. The nonsense is a but I have a, I have a question. So one of your latest books, you have wonderful children's books, by the way, but one of your latest books deals with a deaf child. How did you come up with that idea? Well, um, I was uh, trying to think of uh, the, the craziest uh, story premise I could ever think of. And so uh, I uh, somehow came up with a, a boy who uh, befriends a shark and uh, was able to talk to them. And so in order to, to figure out well, how is that possible? I, I did some uh, research on sharks and uh, uh, realized that um, uh, there's a, a lot of sciences out there that believe that they communicate through um, uh, electromagnetic uh, waves. And uh, so then that got me thinking about, well, how could a person possibly hear that? And uh, then I did some uh, research on different kinds of um, hearing aids and how uh, they are actually affected by electromagnetic uh, waves and uh, and various radiations and that's so, so just, true yeah yeah so i just kind of connected those two and, and then, then once i uh um started jumping into it then i realized that oh no i'm gonna have to write a story from the point of view of a, a deaf child and so i better learn about the deaf community and <laughs> and sign language and and you know all of that, uh, which is a, a whole uh, whole host of problems that come along with that and challenges. But uh, um, what what I end up realizing is that the the main character, even though he's deaf, I mean he's it's like the thirteen year old boy like anyone else, you know, um, mm -hmm. and he has the same kind of uh, thoughts and challenges that uh, most uh, thirteen year olds have, except uh, that there's just a few a few things extra that they have. Right, right, absolutely, and so um, I also know that you are winners of you know winner of several awards. I mean, how did that feel? I mean, well, Nona wants to. I definitely do. <laughs> uh, what's the question? <laughs> how did it feel to win those awards? And well, Nona would like to know personally where does she apply? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's a. Uh, book contests all over the place and it, it feels great to, to win something because it, it uh, you know because I, I believe in everything that I write and hopefully you do too um, and uh, you know it's, it's just really just a matter of getting other people to agree with you you know <laughs> 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 that, 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 that your yeah, that your writing is awesome you know and so that that's uh, that's always my, my goal of, of trying to trying to win these is, is really uh, you know how, how do I frame this in a way that, that people will actually like the story or like the way it's written. I have a question and I want to ask if I could do something a little extra with that question. Do you mind? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I want to sign my question and talk it. So. No, no. No, I don't can't. Be, don't I be can't. Special. I want it to no. be extra. Don't be extra. Don't be extra. Just, just ask the question. Oh. <sighs> what was the biggest difference that you found between the hearing world and the deaf community um boy that's that's pretty hard <laughs> uh it's bet you wish i, I mean, signed it now don't you so yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much <laughs> um well you know as a writer i always try to, to to pull in all the all of the senses in order to describe the story to, to a reader and uh, the, the sense of sound was something i couldn't use at all so i i had to use other mechanisms um but what what i end up uh the, the thought process that I ended up taking was is really just a kid that that uh, that feels all these emotions and doesn't know how to express it, and other people aren't listening to them. And and th to be honest, that that happens to a lot of kids, even if you're not deaf. 
Um, and so w once I, I kind of realized that that's the tactic that I need to take, um, it, I was able to pull out a very relatable character, even though he may be experiencing something that most, most of my readers um, don't have to deal with. So, so does that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> no, it was, it was way awesome. Yeah, that was okay. very nicely done. Um, so do you feel that with this overall education kind of thing uh, of having a deaf character that you will open their eyes, you open your the audience hearing, eyes hearing. to anything mm -hmm. in particular? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, every, every story that I write has, um, has a very strong theme to it. Uh, and I, I, I feel that's very important. Uh, because you know, as a writer, you, you want to say something. You want to say something that's going to last in your in in your readers, and, and that, that they can take away from it. And uh, I mean, even if it's just a different perspective on something they may already know. Um, so, so absolutely, I, I I want all my readers to to learn something. And uh, you know, what what's what's, what's neat about the, uh, the the shark one that you're talking about, which is. This guy right here. <laughs> um, you see that award on there, you guys? See, I told you he won awards. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, what's, uh, what's great about that is that it, you, you get to learn not only about the deaf community, but you get to learn about sharks too, because there's a lot of factual things. Because it, it's it's really a um, a, a light fantasy, uh, meaning that it, it it really doesn't get too off the rails uh th there is a lot of science that that backs up a lot of this but it's kind of quasi science um so so you do end up learning some stuff and in fact uh my, my wife's a teacher and i i'm always trying to structure things in a way that 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 teachers would like and so uh in the back of my book i actually have a bunch of shark facts that um that talks about each of the the various uh, characters in the books, and you know that there's a number of characters that are sharks, um, and it tells them tells a reader like uh, some information about them and how they relate to the story, and um, e even some things that they can do if they're interested in the sharks. You know, like you know, walk along the beach and look for shark teeth. You know, I mean, just just simple things. Um, but uh, anything that 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 would really inspire, uh, you know, a kid to to go out and learn something. So let me understand this. You have a book that just works perfectly with classrooms. So teachers, <laughs> you know you have a, you have to introduce them to marine biology. You need to pick up his book. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> you have a I'm gonna Oh no, I'm sorry. I was so busy co-signing what you were saying. I was <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Co sign. <laughs> so, did you have a question of <laughs> Okay. So did you have other you have other books? Yeah, yeah. I, I have a total of 11 books published. Yeah. Um, so I, I have ones that are um, for like uh, children's picture books um, to uh, uh, to other ones that are more serious nature. This one uh, centers on uh, uh, racism in a small southern town. And the title uh, of that book is no good, you guys. It's very Yeah, I know. It's no good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I have like uh, other series that are more fun and adventurous. But uh, in each one of them, that you, you learn something uh, deep and meaningful. Um, this one actually centers on uh, child abuse, uh, which is a pretty serious subject uh, and pretty creepy face too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and by the way, that, that's that's not me as a kid either. It, it's just I don't know. A lot of people have asked me that. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, I I just absolutely love writing stories. I've been writing really for as long as I've. Uh, been reading and um I, i'm just excited to to be able to share every single one of them with with all the readers i can i'm just gonna say i was gonna ask you the next question i know that was gonna be the question how long have you been writing, writing? And, then, and then my question was what made you want to write so many books and voila yeah. there you, so, you should, okay you just stole our questions like what well, okay so now well, it's an empty tank. Do you just want to ramble now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we have no we have actually do have do you have I'm checking. I'm no, I checking. well, well, you know, I'll tell you what. Is it really? Oh my goodness, yes. It's always yes. It's it makes me sad, but yeah, it's oh people. I'm amazing. Watch us longer. <laughs> our I guests like are ask, amazing. Our guests are amazing. I like to ask more questions. Okay, go ahead. But okay, so the last question. Well, I wanted to be the last question. Uh, well, so I'm gonna ask this question, and then hopefully we'll just add in another question. Where can people find you on the internet? Your books. Twitter. Uh, 
Uh, all, all my my stories and books are available on Amazon.com, and, and I also have a website, uh, JohnHopeWriting.com, um, and uh, you, you can go to either one. Um, they're, they're also available on um, uh, Barnes and Noble websites and uh, several other ones that are out there. There are, there are a few different formats in uh, uh, Kindle and Nook and paperback. Some of them are in hardback. So <laughs> anyway, I can't. He has book trailers, which are awesome. Oh, yeah, you do. So do I have time? To yes, ask one question. Ask? All right, so quickly, just tell us, what, how do you find time in your day to be able to write 11 books? Um, I, I make it a priority. Uh, it, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of people who, who have a book inside them, and, and, you know, they think about it all the time, and they're like, yeah, I should probably write that. But, but really, you know, it, it's not going to get done unless you make it happen. You know, uh, and so I, I have a uh, a daily quota that that I I try to set. You know, every day. You know, I try to write uh, 500 to 1,000 words every day, uh, even if it's just writing about my day. You know, like I'll sit down and write. I didn't have my coffee today. You know, or you know. Oh, I'm this. sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you know, it, it's it's whatever. But but at least you know, as long as you you keep writing, uh, you will eventually finish something. And uh, I mean, I, I would inspire anybody to, to, to do that because because um, most people do have a, a story that's burning inside them that they, they want to write. I mean, even if it's their own personal experiences, you know, that their, their own trials that they've had. Um, so and, and so how do I do it? I, I just keep writing, you know, that, that's, you know, and occasionally I, I finish a book. <laughs> I love like it. Times. Uh, I like yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. So we're going to wrap up on our end. So it was a pleasure having you on. And we are, I'm Jay. And I'm Winona of the And I Thought Ladies with 11 other wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful, add wonderful adjectives after that. <laughs> She's Ladies. good at shortcutting those adjectives. I am shortcutting today. the adjectives today. And we have written a series of the And I Thought series. Um, you can check all that out on andwethought.com. And just remember, you guys, that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Winona and Jane. Bye-bye.